The Monsters of the Midway are back. The performance so far this offseason is a tease of what you're going to see this upcoming season for the Chicago Bears. The linebacker room is ready, even without Tremaine Edmonds. And we even went out and got another free agent today. But all three levels of this defense are going to dominate. Eddie Jackson said it himself. You're going to see it absolutely yourself, too. The DBs are ball hawks. The defensive line is creating pressure that we haven't seen in over two years. And they're a lot better than a lot of people think. And we're here to break it down. Why? Hello, everyone. We're back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Please hit the like button on this video, share your thoughts in the comment section below, and stay up to date with all Bears news by hitting that subscribe button. I am joined by a very special guest today, Aldo from the Barroom Network. You definitely know him. His Bears coverage is known all over the nation and especially in the Bears community. Aldo, welcome to the show. Excited to have you on. Vic, thanks uh, very much for having me. It is always great to have a new, energetic, and informed voice covering Chicago Bears in our podcast and, and webcast community. So uh, you're a welcome addition. I, I love the work that you've put out so far, and I know it's only going to get better and better. So congratulations to you and your efforts. I, Aldo, you're the man. Like we were just <laughs> talking beforehand, and you know, again, one of the most welcoming people that I've met in the Bears community so far. Excited to be working with you as well, and I'm excited for these Chicago Bears even more because they are going to be something fun this year. And I got to ask you a question off the bat that I think viewers are definitely going to want to put comments in the comment section about. But besides the 1985 defense and all of your coverage. Which defense do you think has been the best in Chicago Bears history since 1985? Wow, that's a tough one, you know, because my immediate reaction is the 1986 Chicago Bears defense where uh, Bill Tobin or Vince Tobin took over the defense from Buddy Ryan. Buddy Ryan went on to become the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, and Tobin took over a team and really had to wrestle with those huge, big 85 pers uh, Bears personalities on defense. And he went out one day and he told them, listen, guys, the 85 Bears defense was known as, as Buddy Ryan's defense. The 86 Bears defense, I want it to be known as your defense, not Tobin's defense, not Ditka's defense, your defense. And he challenged them to play at a higher level. And statistically, they did. They didn't have the ferociousness, that mean streak, junkyard dog uh, Bears defense like 85 that fear, put the fear of – God into into opponents, but statistically they played exceptionally well. Now there were some other great defenses later under Lovey Smith, but I've got to give it to the '86 Bears defense. I hope I'm not cheating by saying that. <laughs> no, no, hey, it's past 1985, and you're correct. I mean, there was a ton of Hall of Famers on that defense, and like you said, statistically they were better in 1985 but maybe the noise wasn't so much because it wasn't a 15 and one record but the bears did have a very good year that year could have won the super bowl again but it's a you definitely definitely answered it correctly and i'm sure a lot of bears fans are going to agree from my perspective i have to say that the 2006 defense was my favorite defense that i've seen in my lifetime mm -hmm. and, you know 2018 is clearly a close second and yeah, but that 2006 team obviously went to the Super Bowl. Erlocker, Briggs, Hunter, Hillenmeyer led that defensive, you know, three-headed monster, and the defensive line was out of this world. But 86, it, it is the second-best uh, historic defense on this in this great franchise of the Chicago Bears. So speaking of that, obviously there were a lot of Hall of Famers on 1986's defense, like 1985, but we've had some since. And right now with the defense that is currently on the field in 2023, if you could take any Chicago Bears defensive Hall of Famer, it could be at any time, could be before 85 or after 85, who would you add to this roster right now and why? Well, I think uh, you got – to think about pass rush, right? And despite the fact that we si signed Yannick Ndakwe, you got to look at Richard Dent, the Hall of Famer, who uh, was just, a, a, you know, exceptional talent, long uh, and quick, the way Matt Eberflus likes his pass rushers. He would be a perfect, perfect fit outside of uh, Ndakwe. And you'd get those two edge rushers pressuring quarterbacks. That would be amazing. The, one of the things about Dent, too, is that he had really, really long arms. And in today's NFL, it's important to have long arms because the quarterback 
back is getting out quickly. And so a lot of pressures are being substituted with just disrupting the pass, the timing, because your arm is up there, tipping the pass and so forth. I think Richard Dent may not get the, the, the number of sacks that he that got back then, but would be so effective at just being a disruptor. I would love to see number 95 suit up for the, for the 2023 Chicago Bears. And honestly, that's my answer too. my, you know, my dad told me all the stories about how great Richard Dent was and just the impact of him. But if you look at him from a physical standpoint, exactly like you're saying, long and athletic, he's not too big. He's not carrying a ton of weight, but he was quick on his feet for his size. And just those two on each side of the ball. I mean, offensive linemen would not know what to do because they're taking all the pressure off. You got to double team both of them somehow. So you got to either throw a tight end package out there and it's still not going to work because then Tremaine Edmonds, Sanborn and Edwards are going to fly up the middle or even Brisker who clearly can get after the quarterback considering he led the team in sacks last year. But that's a whole nother story, but mm -hmm. I'm with you. Richard Dent would have been someone special on this team. And this team has a lot of special players on it right now. So thanks for answering those questions. Although, you know, yeah. and they're, it makes people think everyone's probably hopefully watching is starting to wonder who they would take and you know, what team was their favorite. But right now we have the 2023 Chicago bears and their secondary are a bunch of ball Hawks. You know, they, they showed that against Tennessee. They showed that last year with Kyler Gordon, Jaquan Brisker and Eddie Jackson, and they only got better. Ryan Poles has put a lot of focus into the secondary to make sure that you can't pass against this team anymore. You got to run it and teams aren't going to be able to run it as easy. But let's go. Let's start off with the secondary today. They have been going off. And what is your first impression of the defensive secondary after the first preseason game? It, promising. Uh, I think that this could end up being one of the better defensive backs uh, squad uh, squads in the NFL. And the, the, the biggest concern has, of course, been depth. But there are a lot of young players on this team that could quickly answer that concern uh, with their improved play. I mean, you look at a guy like Jalen Jones, who has proven to be a special team's ace. If he's the fifth or sixth defensive back on this team, that's really good news because I really believe in the young undrafted free agent. Um, and then when you talk about Tyreek Stevenson, their second round draft pick, he could be the starter opposite Jalen Johnson at the other cornerback position you're moving now kyler gordon to his true position which is that slot corner position i love the spider-man nickname that he's uh embraced and he truly plays like spider-man you saw that a couple of incredible hits in that titans game so he from that slot position he's going to be creating a lot of damage at that safety position you've got eddie jackson who is rejuvenated under this matt Eberflus. uh uh, uh, defense. He could have potentially been a, uh, an all-pro or Pro Bowl player last season, if not uh, for, you know, for the injury that he sustained. And it's good to see him at 100%. And then Jaquan Brisker is the guy. Jaquan Brisker has, to me, Hall of Fame potential. If he stays healthy, and I'm a little bit concerned because he's been nicked up a little bit and so forth, but if he, if, if he learns to play still at that very extreme, robust 100 miles an hour speed and and still st stay healthy this guy could be a very very special safety and maybe even one of the all-time greats at the position and for the bears that that is exactly what every single bears fan wants to hear and you can see it in this entire unit i want to go back to jalen johnson real quick although because you know he's in a contract year right now and you know he's been injured every year in the NFL. He almost completes the whole season, but he's, he's right there every single time. And he's usually hurt in key games as unfortunate as it is. But that's why we have a lot of depth now. And like you said, mm -hmm. Jalen Jones is out there. Josh Blackwell is also a really good special teams guy along with depth. But in regards to the Jalen Johnson situation, you know, Ryan Poles has a decision that he has to make with him. Do you re-sign him or do you let him walk next year? He is, an uh, he is an unrestricted free agent next year, so and he wants to stay in Chicago. He is voiced that, and he's a key part of the secondary. If you were Ryan Poles, are you giving Jalen Johnson an extension to stay a part of this defense, or are you going to let him test the market and hopefully he get him back? 
Well, I will, uh, if I'm Ryan Post, I'm negotiating with this agent until about mid-season in, in hopes that I can get to a contract that is a win-win for both the player and the organization. But I would not necessarily have him high higher in my priority list than one of the wide receivers and and that means darnell mooney or um or chase claypool obviously we all have questions about claypool and whether he's going to turn out to be a viable player for the bears and so forth so he would probably be third in my list of priorities i want to make sure that justin fields has the offensive weapons first and foremost and and with so many good cornerbacks out there and more and more coming out of college i might want to risk uh uh you know i i might want to risk losing uh, uh jalen johnson uh, although i would hate to but let's face it he really is not a true number one cornerback he is not the guy that you can feel really good lining up against the best wide receivers of the other team so because of that i think the bears have the upper hand uh, and so negotiate cautiously know that you know while you got money now when you've got to also look at into the near future and signing justin fields to what could be a historic quarterback contract if he plays as well as we all expect he will in the next seat in in 2023 and 2024 you've got to have some money stashed away and so you can't spend too much money on a cornerback who really isn't a number one type corner in the nfl that is a very fair point. And a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, analysts, a lot of other channels will say cornerback is not hard to replace, but it is hard to replace at the same time because there's a million of them out there and you can keep a lot on your roster and special teams. And there's always that one guy that can make an impactful play and be on the roster. You know, you had Adams this past weekend with that nice interception against the Tennessee Titans, a guy that a lot of people didn't even know before that game. And now you're seeing a guy who can go out and make plays. I'm with you. I, I have him a little bit down on my list of priorities, but I'm happy I asked because this it is a ball hawk group and it's super fun. I think it's more depth than the 2018 team had. You know, I know Prince of Mukamara, Kyle Fuller, Eddie Jackson led the way for that squad, but this squad has just a lot of studs on it. And Spider Man's my favorite nickname, too. I know everyone's like, oh, that's Brian Burns' nickname. No, I, I think there's also a million different Spider-Mans in the Spider-Verse. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. So, so he, ours is the athletic, small, quick one. So that's let, that's what we'll keep it as. Nick, let me ask you a question. Why do you think that Jalen has only one career interception with the Chicago Bears? Do you think that's because of his play, or do you think that's because of the pass rush, combination of things? Why, why do you think that you know he hasn't? been delivering uh more turnovers so you i the way i look at it is that eddie jackson had that big decline when chuck pagano took over and who was jalen johnson's first defensive coordinator chuck pagano so he was taught in the nfl not to be a ball hawk more of a defensive one-on-one -on -one kind of guy knock the ball away hope that you have a teammate come and pick it up I don't think it's on Jalen Johnson at all. I think that he, because in college, he was an interception machine. In preseason, he's an interception machine. In camp, he's been an interception machine. And he had opportunities last year. He had two drops last year. And they were clearly in his hands. And, you know, Allen Williams, Matt Eberflus's defense is very, very defensive back friendly. And also go after and get the ball. Take the risk because the way we have our defense designed, you're going to have a teammate behind you to pick it up just in case the ball does get by you, which it's a gamble you're willing to take. It's the NFL. You have to take risks like anything else in the world. But I think that's why Jalen Johnson does only have one career interception. And I've said this before. I think that I'm, he's coming out and having five picks this year, not because it's a contract year, but he's got all the help that he needs now. He has established you know, guys that aren't rookies anymore besides the one other corner that's going to be beside him. But mm -hmm. Tyreek Stevenson, Terrell Smith, they're very talented, and I think that this defense is going to do a great job. So I'm excited about him, but, you know, we'll see. I'm optimistic. But if he gets five picks, I'm going to Vegas, and I'm putting it all on black for the Bears. Because I'll tell you, if, if he gets a couple of picks, Early, let's say he gets uh, a pick, a couple of picks against uh, uh, Jordan Love against the Packers week one. I'm Ryan Pose. I'm on the phone with his agent saying, okay, let's get this thing done before it costs me too much money. <laughs>
<laughs> Absolutely. And you know, what's nice is that, you know, the, the, I feel like the defensive back market hasn't gotten too extravagant yet. It's not mm-hmm. like quarterbacks that are making 40, $50 million a year these days. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're kind of like the running backs of the defense. They're not paid too much in the off ball linebacker kind of deal, mm-hmm. but I'm with you. I, if, after that first pick, I hope they put a, a a camera on poles and he's on the phone. Like he's, you already know that he's calling Jalen Johnson's guy. Like, okay, <laughs> you broke the curse. We get it now. I love it. <laughs> I'd I would be excited for that. And I'm also excited about a lot of these players on the defense, Aldo. But one thing I have to ask you is that there is a lot of talent out there, and there's a lot of guys that are making an impact. And there's no I in team. But my question to you is that out of everyone that is on this roster right now and everyone that's pretty much going to be a starter from a fan's perspective and what the depth chart is saying, who is the guy that has to be on the field all the time and is going to have the single biggest impact on this defense? Tremaine Edmonds, without a doubt. Tremaine Edmonds, and it really hurts that he's hurt right now, so we didn't see him at all in in week one, but all reports saying that he's going to be ready for the regular season open. This young man, Tremaine Edmonds, and he still really is a young man because he came out early, um, he has all of the requisite to be an outstanding three-down linebacker in that he can snuff out the run, he can guard – running backs and tight ends out of out of the backfield. He can play th- that third defensive back. You know, the cover two, a lot of people say, is really not a cover two, it's a cover three, and that's because you're always having some help with those two deep uh, 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 safeties. And Tremaine Edmonds could be that guy. He could be Brian Erlacher. Erlacher strength was dropping back uh, into the middle of the field and being a disruptor uh, there. Tremaine Edmonds is smart. He's uh, incredibly athletic. He's quick from sideline to sideline. He's got all of the range necessary to be a a, a truly, uh, I think he could be, if this defense, if all our fantasies are fulfilled about this defense, it's going to be because of Tremaine Edmonds. He's the centerpiece of this defense, and he's going to make all of the other players around him much better with the little things that he does, and he's a leader. You know, he's walked into this clubhouse and he started to embrace the young players and really doing a job in the locker room. I really uh, love this acquisition by Ryan Poles. And I think Tremaine Edmonds is the, is the answer to your question. So it's funny because I actually wanted Tremaine over Roquan way back when, when this whole thing first started. And I, when he came back, I was like, you know what? Everything happens for a reason because we got, a Roquan almost nearly the same time, better in some ways, in my personal opinion, and better Mm -hmm. for this type of defense. Uh, We got him, we got TJ Edwards, and a second round pick out of the whole darn Mm -hmm. darn thing. So it worked out pretty darn well in the Bears' favor. And, you know, good luck to Roquan in Baltimore. He got got what he wanted, and he's a great player. There's no doubt about it. But mm-hmm. he's not on the team anymore, and I'm personally much happier with Tremaine Edmonds right now. And I yeah. agree, he is going to be the centerpiece of this defense, literally the centerpiece of this defense. And just to, let me, I got to ask you a one quick question, because today, obviously, we went out and signed uh, Michael Walker off of waivers. And a lot of people were like, why are we getting so many linebackers? Is Edmonds' injury more serious than we thought? I don't think so. I think, I think, so I think everything's going to be just fine. Yeah, I think oh. Walker was acquired simply because he's a really good player and depth has been an issue with this team. And so, uh, you know, players get nicked up during the course of the season. And if you've got a, a, a Michael Walker who started 12 games for the Falcons last season, had a couple of interceptions last season, an interception before, he's all, uh, around the ball, he's uh, really good. Uh, behind the line line of scrimmage and stopping the running attack and so forth. This guy's a very active guy. He's not a thumper. He's he's just he fits that uh, billing of uh, that that player profile that the Bears love. Long and lean, six foot three, long arms can get around. He's a good fit for this Bears linebacker. And so if Tremaine is out for a few days or a few weeks, and, or if uh, uh, um, Walker's out or, or whatever, he's going to really pay big dividends. And I bet you, I've not studied his special teams play uh, uh, tape, but I bet you he's an excellent special teams player given his, his size and skills. 
And also the best part is, is that he wasn't even, he's 1.1 million of cap. He's not a big cap. I know it's the last year of his rookie contract and it's 2.7 million depending on his performance this year. But you're getting a guy that had a hundred plus tackles in 12 starts last year and only 16 games. And with uh, four, was it four quarterback hit or four tackles for loss, one quarterback hit and one sack with two interceptions. He could be a special Mm -hmm. player on this team, a good rotation, kind of like Noah's well. I mean, I think that, like you said, this team has struggled with depth before because they put all their money in their starters. And championships always have a ton of depth, the next man up kind of deal. So I was was very ecstatic about the signing. And, you know, although two more quick questions for you, or not quick, but, you know, two more questions for you, and I know that I wanted to save them for the end because I this is what Bears fans get excited about, especially the last one. So I got a little cliffhanger for you there. Okay. But out of all the rookies that we've had, you know, Javon Dexter Sr., Zach Pickens, uh, Tyreek Stevenson, Terrell Smith, Travis, but the list goes on and on. We really built the defense through the draft this year. Who are you most excited about and why? Definitely Javon Dexter. I mean, this guy is an incredible physical specimen at six foot six, a little over 300 pounds. And with the quickness that he has, this guy could end up, you know, the, the, the ceiling for him is uh, way out above the clouds. This guy has all the athletic, athletic skills to be a very special interior defensive lineman and potentially become that three tech that the Chicago Bears really need in order for this defense to jump to the next level. Dexter's got all the tools and listening to his press conferences, he's bright, he's smart, he's dedicated, listening to coaches talk about him. Dexter is is good. And this is a hard pick because as you noted, you know, some of the other young defenders are are also excellent excellent uh, prospects. Pickens, who got his first sack on Saturday against the Titans. Tyreek Stevenson had an excellent game. Some blemishes, of course, uh, as he was picked on early, but really, you know, you could see why the Bears loved him with his length and his uh, physical style of play. But I, you know, the, the the spotlight still gets back to Jervon Dexter just because I see superstar, just like with Brisker, I see superstar potential in, in Dexter. Both second round guys, both with a chip on their shoulder, impactful on their teams, and they love being a Chicago Bear. I, When I, so I interviewed Jervon about a month and a half ago, and he is the most down to earth, dedicated individual. And I thought I was talking to someone, I'm 26, and I thought I was talking to someone a little older than myself. He's 21 years old. (laughs) He's got a great head on his shoulders, and he just wants it. And when I saw that video of him answering the phone call from Ryan Poles being told that he was going to get drafted, one, I'm shocked that couch didn't break because he was rocking it back and forth with how excited <laughs> he was. But he he's just passionate. He's got a good head on his shoulders. And, you know, I, I think it's so impactful to how much his family means to him when it comes to the game of football. You know, he has a son. And, you know, all he talks about is, I do this for my family. I do this for my son. And, you know, he has that such mature aspect to him. And that's more important than a lot of things a lot of people realize. He's yep. going to be a superstar player too. And because yep. we've had we've had some, you know, I'm not cough, cough, Tank Johnson. We've had some tough <laughs> defensive linemen back in the day. So good to have him on our side. But speak, I'm happy you said Jervon Dexter. I was hoping you'd say him or Zach Pickens because it mm-hmm. leads me really well into my last question. It's about the defensive line, something that a lot of people – we're concerned about to last week. Pretty much all the thoughts of that are gone. Mm-hmm. How many sacks do you think that this defensive line unit is going to have in 2023, 2024? Wow. <clears throat> um, great question. I foresee there being probably somewhere in the mid forties. Um, I okay. can see in Dockway getting his 10. I can see on the right side of the line with the rotating right defensive linemen, them totaling about 10, and then the rest of the players uh, getting uh, in that 20 to 25 range. So if I were to pick a number, I, I would say 45, 46. Um, I don't – again, you know, the the NFL has become uh, 
offenses are just getting rid of the ball so quickly now that it's very difficult to get sacks. And so quarterback pressures, quarterback disruptions, uh, tipped balls, those are all vital. You know, uh, and in many cases, I would prefer to see a tipped up uh, uh, football coming out of the hands of the quarterback because that will give our defensive backs an opportunity to turn the ball over. So I'm not downplaying the importance of a sack, but what's important is collapsing the the, the pocket, bringing fear. I've been to a number of games. Like you remember the uh, primetime game against uh, the Rams when Jared Goff was their quarterback. The fear, I was up in the 200 level. I, I could, and, and Sub Zero, Greg Braggs and I were sitting next to one another. I could see and sense the fear in Jared Goff's eyes because it, it wasn't the cold weather. It was the all these bears caving in on him and he had nowhere to run and he's throwing interceptions and so forth. That's my favorite type of Bears defense is just to instill fear on your opponent and make them uh, shoot themselves in the feet. So, hey, if we get 45 uh, uh, sacks and, you know, a couple of dozen interceptions from our defensive backfield, I'm in hog heaven, man. <laughs> uh, I Listen, I'm with you. I Will Wright is, uh, when he was on a couple of weeks ago, setting 60. And I was like, man, I'm down for three set, three plus sacks a game. I think that'd be great. Yeah. And oh yeah. <laughs> uh, one one thing that I think a lot of people are missing is how strong this defensive line is. You know, Andrew mm -hmm. Billings is arguably the strongest man in the NFL right now. Yes. And and just how much pressure the secondary takes off the defensive line because now quarterbacks can, they can't pass and if they drop back, they the defensive line has more time to get to them. But I'm with you, man, because that's why we're called the monsters of the midway, instilling fear into opposing offenses. I, you know, I go back to, um, you know, the water boy when Bobby Boucher is on the other side of the ball and everyone's like, please don't hurt me. That's what I want the Chicago Bears to come back and do. So yes, it's yes, going to. <laughs> it's going to be a fun season. And although, you know, the monsters of the midway are back and I'm so happy that I had the chance to cover it with you because it's an exciting time to be a bears fan again. And this team is going to, like you were saying earlier, this team is on the right path, well-constructed and the future is very bright. And we have two first round picks next year. So there's a lot of good ad rushers again. in you know, next year's draft, who knows what we'll do, but Aldo, I can't thank you enough for coming onto the show. It's been an honor. It's been a lot of fun. I'm going to ask you to stay around for a minute or two after uh, when we're done recording, sure. just to chop it up a little bit more. But thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. My absolute pleasure. Anytime you need me, uh, just give me a ring and I'll do the best I can to, to join you. Absolutely. And thank you all for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. Join alongside Aldo from Bar Room Network, and we will see you guys next time.